غرد يا شبل الإيمان غرد واصدح بالقرآن غرد يا شبل الإيمان غرد واصدح بالقرآن was narrated to us by Anas ibn Malik who was a young man who served the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the latter part of his lifetime. Anas ibn Malik was only a 10 year old boy when his mother sent him to work for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as his servant. He helped the Prophet and stayed with him uh, day and night uh, for the rest of uh, his lifetime. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa himself demonstrated the meaning of the golden rule in how he treated Anas because Anas was a servant a person who people treat normally, a servant is somebody below them, somebody beneath them. They treat uh, a servant, especially a young person, a child, as uh, somebody who is ignorant and who is not worthy of respect and good treatment. But that is not how the Prophet behaved towards him. The Prophet always treated everybody with respect, kindness, and gentleness. And as said, he never raised his voice. He never rebuked him. He never said, oof, you know, which is a way of uh, rebuking somebody and criticizing their behavior. He never uh, yelled at him, why did you do this? Why did you do that? But instead, he always treated Anas as his brother in Islam, first and foremost. And he respected and appreciated the help that he got from him. And when, he, when Anas did things, which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was not satisfied with, he kept that to himself. He did not criticize him and he did not belittle him and try to make him feel insignificant. So Anas was one of the young people who were in contact with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the last years of his life. And he absorbed the Prophet's manners and conduct and the Prophet's uh, uh, hadith which were taught to him. One thing is that the Prophet took Anas and put his hands on his head and prayed for him, made dua and asked Allah to bless him, to bless him with long life and many children and wealth and with Jannah, with paradise. And all these things, inshallah, have taken place. Uh, first of all, Anas lived to be more than 100 years old, one of the oldest of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. When he did finally die, he was one of the wealthiest of them, a very wealthy person with more than 100 living children and grandchildren. So, uh, and of course, we uh, pray to Allah also that, to enter Anas ibn Malik into paradise. So, Anas was one of the people who benefited greatly with his conduct, uh, with his exposure to the Prophet, and who benefited us by conveying to us the teachings of the Prophet by example and by words. And this hadith is one of the many, many, many hadiths which we have received from Anas ibn Malik. And this is, as we've called it, the Islamic version of the golden rule. This was a rule taught to us by all the different Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the best, most beautiful, comprehensive version is the version which is found in this hadith in its many different narrations and versions which have come down to us in the collections of the Prophet's uh, traditions, speeches, and actions. So the Prophet وسلم, said that none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself, or in some versions loves for his neighbor, or loves for the people what he loves for himself. And in one version it adds, of good things, of those things which are good. So the Prophet ﷺ made it a condition of Islam. You don't truly believe, you don't truly have iman or faith. Uh, when he says, you don't believe, in Arabic, la yu'minu, somebody might misunderstand and believe that iman or Islamic faith and belief is totally canceled out if one lacks this principle. But the Prophet ﷺ often used these terminologies to make people understand that Iman is complex. It increases, it decreases by certain actions and behaviors that we do. And there are many different actions that affect our belief. Uh, so when we do sinful behaviors, when we treat people wrong, when we disrespect Allah and His commandments, or disrespect the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and His commandments and advice to us, it weakens our faith. And sometimes, if we continue, it can destroy our faith completely. Uh, the Prophet Wasallam told us that each time we disobey Allah, uh, black spots appear on our heart. And they continually come upon us. If we don't repent, if we're not sorry, we don't change our way, our heart eventually becomes clouded with these black spots until it, 
the whole heart becomes corrupted and black and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets a seal upon our hearts and we're not able anymore to change. It's too late then. Now we can't go back. We've totally rejected the faith and left out of our faith and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very important for us to realize that many, many different things affect our faith. Not just, I believe in Allah, I believe in the Prophet, I believe in the Quran, I'm a Muslim, but the way we behave, the way we treat things around us affects us. And he said one of the important parts of faith, one thing that will affect your belief, that will increase or decrease, is how you treat other people, how you treat your neighbor, how you treat your brothers. If you love for them what you love for yourself, you have the true, complete, perfect faith. And when you do not love your brothers, you do not love for them what you love for yourself, then your faith weakens. So we have to always be on guard with how we treat our brothers, how we treat our neighbors, how we treat our fellow human being. Is it helping me? Is it helping my faith? Is it helping me in my relationship with Allah? Or is my behavior hurting me and hurting my faith in Allah? And so part of our faith is loving for other people what we love for ourselves. That's why I said this is the Islamic golden rule. There's a famous uh, uh, translation of the golden rule, for example, found in the Bible. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's one version, but it's not the complete comprehensive version. Because that implies that I do to others what I like them to do to me. But the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, specifically said, love for other people what you love for yourself. We all love for ourselves. We're all ambitious for ourselves. We like a lot of things. We have desires for, for good. We want to be the best. We want to be ahead of everyone else. And so that implies that if I want to be ahead, I want to be the best, therefore I should want my brother to be ahead. I should want him to be the best. I can't have envy in any way. Envy is one of the things that can destroy Iman, destroy faith faster than anything else. Envy is a disrespect and disbelief in Allah and disrespect and disbelief in his attributes.